Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Heart Breathings. Today, I'm going to be setting up my reading journal, which is actually more than just a reading journal. It's a story journal, and I'll get into that a little bit more. I am using an A5 Stalogy notebook, which is different than you might see usually people using for bullet journals. I have just a Midori cover. I have a bunch of stickers already printed out and all my supplies with me here. I also am putting the entire book and its cover into a Hobonichi cover that I've already taken the time to set up the pockets. I have papers and tip-ins and everything I could possibly want to use like glue sticks and ephemera and other things. I probably won't use all of it, but I do have these Staedtler markers as well. They're kind of like dual tip markers that I will use in the setup when I'm coloring things in like little highlighters and things like that. For the pens that I'm using, I just have this pencil. I have this micro perm uh, pen in a 0 0.01, which is a fine tip. And then I have the Secura Micron in an 08, which is a thicker tip and just a basic gel pen. I also have a ruler <laughs> because <laughs> I'm gonna need it and an eraser and a bunch of other things like washi tapes and stuff like that. I like to basically just fill my desk with everything I think I might use and then I just go to town and we see where we end up. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this beautiful cover. This is a Malia Kent tweed cover from Hobonichi and I didn't really use it when I first bought it. So I'm excited to use it now. And then I also have just this blue and white polka dot scrapbook paper that's going to go underneath the Midori cover at the very end. And then I took a page of full sheet mailing label, which is basically like sticker paper. Uh, and I went ahead and cut it down because I'm going to create a washi dashboard for the very front of my journal. And I had set up a story journal. It's more than just a reading bullet journal. It's a story journal because I'm going to track the games I'm playing. I'm going to track the movies I'm watching, the TV shows I'm watching, the anime. Everywhere I'm consuming story, I'm going to track it in this journal. And I had previously set up an Archer and Olive, so I will link that for you down below. It's going to be kind of a similar setup. This A5 Stalogy notebook is very, very different from that Archer and Olive. If you're familiar with Archer and Olive, it's more the traditional bullet journal type style that a lot of people use that you see here on YouTube because the pages are really thick and you can get, it's like 160 GSM and you can get so much paint and nothing bleeds through and everybody loves it. And so I thought when I set mine up that I was also going to just use that Archer and Olive, but the pages are so thick that I just never wanted to use it for some reason. I've just am in a floppy notebook era for myself. And so I just set it up and then didn't use it. Um, but I really, really feel that part of the reason if, if you aren't familiar with my channel, I'm a writer and I'm so busy and I have two kids, I have multiple businesses, I have a lot of responsibilities, and one of them is being a writer, but I have been spending so much more of my time doing my other business stuff that needs to get done. And I think part of it is because I haven't been refilling my well. It's like I spend all my time either with the family or doing things for other people or marketing or working on my business. Didn't that turn out so beautiful, by the way? This is all simply gilded washi tape from the subscription box. And this is from the couture box. And oh my gosh, it just turned out so gorgeous. It kind of has Sailor Moon vibes, I feel like. Um, and all I did was just set that up on that piece of sticker paper and then st stuck it into the front of the journal. And now I'm just putting in some uh, backing paper, just a little scrapbooking paper there. And I'm tipping in this super cute Disco Cherries from Illy Millie Designs. I'll try to have everything linked um, for you down below. And I'm just using like regular tape to secure that in there. And then I'm gonna do a quote. And here you can see that I'm pulling out that previous journal. But basically, I am looking for ways to refill my creative well. And I started to realize at the beginning of this year that it's more like getting back to my writing is more than just sitting down and working on my book. 
I need to make sure that when I sit down, the gas tank isn't empty, so to speak, that I have creative juice to pull from. And I think that what I've come to realize this year, and actually I know it's true because it's working now that I've started refilling my well, is that, you know, you can't pour from an, from an empty cup and it doesn't feel like work to game or to read or to take time off. But at the same time, it's essential for creative people to do things that are not work, that are just for fun, that like refill the well. So that's what this journal is all about. It's a creative outlet. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not a artistic, like artsy person. This isn't going to be beautiful, like plant-based bride and all these other people that I love, love, love to follow. This is going to be full of mistakes and it's going to be messy, but it's going to be a place where I can hold myself accountable for the stories that I am consuming and where I can make notes about the things that I loved most about the stories. And so that's what I'm doing here. So on that first page, I just had a quote and I had a bunch of stickers from games and books and movies and anime that I love. And then here I'm setting up a full year calendar of boxes for um, pretty much a single box for every single day of the year. And uh, I'm leaving this in just because if you're somebody who gets nervous to use your journals because you're afraid it's not going to be perfect, then just know that you're not alone, but that it's okay if you make mistakes and that we all do and it's okay. Like I got gel pen pretty much all over these boxes and it's going to be okay. It's going to dry and it'll look great when it's all filled in. <laughs> but basically I want to fill in the box every day that I consume story and I'm going to create a key for it and I'm going to make sure that I can keep notes in terms of what types of stories like did I game or did I read or you know what did I do um, and then I'm going to be tipping in other papers and things like this I think this one is from the Honey Bee Shop uh, and I will link everything I can for you down below but one of the things about using this type of notebook, the A5 Stalogy, is that this paper is not exactly Tomo River paper, but it is very similar. It's very thin. It's very see-through. So you're going to see that as I write on this page, when I turn the page, you can see every single mark that I made through the paper. And so like here, you can see that box, that grid on the other side. And now I'm going to set up a book series tracker. And so when I do that and you turn the page back to that pixel tracker, it's all there. And so if you are somebody who does not like to see a lot of ghosting, you probably would not like to set up this kind of journal for a bullet journal because it just isn't going to work for you. For me, I knew and anticipated that this was going to happen, especially because I'm choosing to use some felt tip kind of pens that are really juicy. But in the end, I think that I will reach for this journal more because it's floppy. I don't know why it's a texture thing for me or something. I don't know, but we'll see. But I had set up previously that one that you saw that was Archer and Olive journal, and I just never wanted to use it. Uh, no shade to Archer and Olive because their journals are just incredible. And you can see I'm actually using <laughs> another piece of Archer and Olive stuff that I have there to hold up the side of this. So I, I love their products. It just wasn't right for this particular project for me. So here, one thing that I'm doing is setting up a series tracker for some books that I either own in paperback or in ebook that I have been dying to read and have potentially owned for multiple years and still haven't read. Um, and most of them on this page, I think are gonna be young adult series. So you've got the Mortal Instruments from, C C C C <laughs> sorry, the Mortal Instruments from Cassandra Clare. You've got the Red Queen series from Victoria Abbeyard. You've got the Truly Devious from Maureen Johnson. And I started to say series complete, but then I remembered there was a fifth book and I'm not even sure and couldn't find online if there's gonna be more books. So I didn't put series complete there. And then Throne of Glass, of course. And then I also also am adding in one more on this sheet, which is the Grisha verse. Um, this is obviously three different series. So it's a trilogy and then two duologies 
from Lee Bardugo, and I have been wanting to read these forever, and I know these are all books that I'm going to love, and I just, you know, haven't made the time for it. I also added in the Inheritance Games there, and then on the other side, my two fantasy reads, which are The Wheel of Time and The Cosmere Books from Brandon Sanderson. And look how much you can see this on the other side. But I also love the way it feels because it becomes sort of upraised on that side for me to, f I don't know, it's like beautiful texture. Now, some of those books, like the some of The Wheel of Time, I have already read, but I'm still tracking the series because I'm still reading the series. So uh, I'm going to continue to track those as they go. And there's more Cosmere books coming, so I will add to it in another location in the future. So that middle page that I skipped there is going to be a place that I'm going to put my stats, and I probably actually will paste in those from a different piece of paper or from sticker paper or something like that because there is so much ghosting from these other two pages that I probably will skip that page and use like put something pasted on top of it. But here on this page, I am actually creating a TBR bookshelf. And if you look on Pinterest and you search for a reading bullet journal, you're going to see, or even here on YouTube, you're going to see a thousand different TBR bookshelves that are absolutely gorgeous that can give you so many good ideas. Mine uh, is a little bit sloppy, <laughs> but it turns out pretty cute, I think, in the end. But it's, it's, I'm no artist and that's okay. So even, and like, look at, at this doesn't even look like, earth I don't know but I want to go through and on the spine of each of these books put the books that are actually on my physical bookshelves that I have not read yet so I've got a bunch of dark academia a bunch of book of the month club books and just other things that I have some of them from that series page some of them that I haven't listed in this journal yet and I really want to go through and add them to this journal and then color them in when I read them. Now, this is not going to be just a 2024 bullet journal or story journal. This is, I anticipate, going to take me multiple years, if not four or five years to completely fill out. So I'm not really setting it up as like a yearly journal. It's just going to be, um, you know, I'll put books read in 2024, but then I'll also put books read in 2025, you know, down a little few pages down the road. So again, not the most gorgeous, but it's all good. On my books um, that I've read in 2024, I'm only putting 20 slots because that is more books than I read last year, but I'm hoping that I can actually read more and you'll see in a minute that I might actually just completely tear this page out. <laughs> I found this quote on Pinterest that said good writing is like a window pane and I thought oh that's so perfect of a quote for this spread on books on writing and craft meaning books that tell me how to write books and then I just got I think impatient and sloppy and didn't really draw something out and I am just not an artist and so if I don't actually have something written out that I'm watching from someone else's like Pinterest or YouTube or something like that, trying to copy, I just, I can't create stuff from scratch. So I hate how this turned out. It just looks kind of crazy. So I might just delete it or not delete, I guess, tear it out. Um, and then that bookshelf will be opposite this books on writing and craft that I'm going to be reading throughout the year. So we'll see, <laughs> we'll see how that turns out. Now this next section, I just printed out all of my own book covers. So these are all the books that I have written. And this actually isn't everything that I've written, but this is the majority of my books. And then uh, I did not put any of my upcoming books except for The Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw. But I have been listening to kind of on repeat Jennifer Lynn Barnes's uh RWA speech about writing your id and id of course is a Freudian term and if you're familiar with her speech she basically talks a lot about pouring the things that you love and are naturally interested in um, from like your core being into your books and so I'm going to make that id list there. Here is a gaming spread. So this is um, my Twitch spread as well as just games I want to play. So I have an Xbox X, a Switch, and a PS5 now. I just bought the PS5 uh, this past week. 
and I stream on Twitch every Thursday night. It's just twitch.tv slash Sarah Cannon. And I accidentally printed, I don't know how it happened because I <laughs> actually um, thought that I had measured these perfectly, but I printed all of these things bigger than I intended to. Um, so anyway, I put some games there that I want to play on each of the consoles. I have a list of anime and I was looking up how many seasons are the ones as well as some TV shows that I want to watch like The Last of Us and Ted Lasso. Very different genres, but uh, things that I really want to watch that people have recommended. So if you have any other recommendations for your favorite anime or favorite TV series that you think I might enjoy, then go ahead and put them down there or games that you think I might enjoy playing. So I am going to create a monthly spread that's just going to be a two page spread for every month of the year and they're just all 12 going to be right here like side by side each other and I'm going to write down everything that I watched listened to gamed that kind of thing and then I'm also going to keep track of how many chapters did I read how many episodes did I listen to how many levels did I get in my games or or chapters did I play how many hours did I play maybe and then how many words did I write because I want to see the correlation between when I am really focused on five to ten new books games you know I'm really refilling my well how much is that affecting my writing because I have a feeling that the more I allow myself to play and have fun and just be chill and let my brain turn off for a little while, the more I will write when it's time to sit down and write. And I want to kind of prove that to myself. So that is what I'll have. So I skipped a bunch of pages because I'll set up March, April, May, etc. Now, because I'm setting this up in February, I don't have all the stats for January, but I do keep a nightly journal. So I'm going to go through that and see where I might have journaled like that. We watched two episodes of Fairy Tale tonight, or I, I played this game tonight and see how much of that I can fill in. Something else I'll do in this journal is actually setting up just sort of like trackers for the seasons of things that I'm watching. So fairy tale is the anime George and I are currently watching and there's 328 episodes of that show. And we are on something like episode 128 or something. So we're still 200 episodes from the end. So that's going to be kind of the TV show that we're watching for now. I also am still reading through the wheel of time. So you saw me set that up. I'm going to be making some notes on that and I'll be sharing that in my monthly notebook challenge. So if you're not following me yet, definitely subscribe because we do a notebook challenge every single month where I share how I'm using my notebook. So I'll be updating you on how this one is going. Now, I definitely cannot take credit for this particular setup in terms of that, um, like reading log there. I found it on Pinterest. I will try to link it down below. I'll try to find the actual source for it. Also, now I am setting up the actual journal. How cute is this sticker that was custom made a sticker of me from Lacey at Studio Adorkable. Oh my gosh. Just, I opened that in my mail the other day and literally like squealed. It was so cute. So I'll be sharing more of those as we go. Then I set up some tabs so that I can easily find those pages. And now it is all set up. So this is my brand new story journal, bullet journal. And and I am so, so excited. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to just kind of flip through it one last time. I'm hoping that this will be a place over the next several years that I can keep track of, you know, accountability for the things I'm reading, the things I'm writing, the things that I am buying and purchasing, making sure that I'm actually following through with that, the books on craft that I'm reading, just the things that I love about stories and that I'm always drawn to about stories. I'm going to be keeping notes here, not just on the tracking of what I'm doing, but also, you know, what did I love about these characters? What did I learn about the way these authors pulled me in or made me interested in the story? And, you know, what did I find interesting or what did I learn from this author? So over time, hopefully this whole thing will get filled up with tons of stories that I have consumed and loved. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Thank you.